Good morning, friends. Thank you so much for being here. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful sunrise that was. I don't know what it is, but I always feel like I've accomplished something great when I wake up before the sun. And during the summer, when it's warm outside and not so cold and rainy, it's so much easier to wake up earlier, especially when it's light outside by 5 a.m. and here the sun rises currently at 5.20 in the morning. Waking up specifically to watch the sunrise has been like medicine for my soul. It has felt so very good and has been a really nice self-care treat of summer so far. So today is the day and I don't know how I feel about it, but today I'm endeavoring to read Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, the very last work of Jane Austen that I have to read. I have read all of her other novels and even her short stories and Sanditon, her unfinished novel. Mansfield Park is the very last thing that I have to read by Jane Austen and it's really bittersweet because I love her works. Reading a Jane Austen novel feels like being in a grassy meadow under a sunset on a beautiful summer evening. Fragrant wildflowers all about such as Queen Anne's lace, lavender, buttercups, and more. Golden sunshiny light from the setting sun and a picnic feast shared with good company and lots of feel-good laughter. That is where I go when I read any Jane Austen novel. And it will feel so good to have read every piece by her. It's an accomplishment, um, but I don't want it to be over. I don't want it to end. And as such, I go into today with mixed feelings. But as soon as I finish this one, I'm going to start over. I haven't read Pride and Prejudice for five years, and I read Sense and Sensibility four years ago. So. I mean, I'm just gonna start over again. But today I am reading Mansfield Park and I'm so happy that you guys are here along for the ride to experience this grand finale, if you will, of one of my most favorite authors. 
this is not the last book she wrote. It's just the last book that I was able to find used in a bookstore. So I have gone chronologically out of order, but Mansfield Park is the novel which I know the least about. Um, I wasn't very familiar with this. Uh, Northanger Abbey or Persuasion, but I definitely know the least about this one. And it has, I think, the most mixed reviews. So I'm very curious to find out what I think about it. Um, I'm sure that I'm going to love it. So friends, without further ado, go ahead and grab yourselves a hot cup of tea or coffee or hot chocolate, your favorite cozy blanket, and let's get to it. <music> and 16 pages in which puts me at chapter 12 absolutely nothing has happened um, yeah there's been no action the book is following the classic Jane Austen trope which is a quiet country life that is unexpectedly interrupted by an unfamiliar face or an unknown person or persons that usually bring a lot of action and drama into the plot. Um, that happened pretty early on in Mansfield Park with the arrival of the Crawfords. However, um, <laughs> there hasn't been very much action or drama. But as always, I just really enjoy Jane Austen's writing. I love the dialogue between the characters and I love how she characterizes her characters. That's a lot of characters. It's taking a lot of time, but I have no doubt that our heroine, Fanny, will somehow prove herself. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how the plot unravels. However, I'm very hungry, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a little food break.
friends, I've made it to page 200 at this point. Still, not much has happened, though there has been a bit of drama. Things are definitely escalating, I think. <laughs> Hopefully that the next 200 plus pages will be more dramatic, if you will. Um, but it is nearly almost 6 p.m. and I actually have dinner plans with a friend. I'm meeting my friend Lillian at a restaurant called Yala, which is Middle Eastern style food and it's supposed to be really, really good. It's also right next door to Annie Bloom's books and I have an order of books waiting for me to be picked up from Annie Bloom's. So I think that if Lillian is up for it after dinner, we will pop into the bookstore and pick up my books as well as have a browse. I do really want to finish Mansfield Park today. It's okay if I don't finish, but I'm definitely going to continue to read it when I get home tonight. For now, I need to get going and I am going to take you guys with me. I'm not sure how comfortable Lillian is in front of the camera, so I'll probably only get some artsy clips here and there, but you all are coming with me. So let's go get some food and browse some books. Dinner was so good. It was so nice. Yeah, and now we're gonna head to Annie Bloom's books and pick up some books. Hello friends, um, it is now 11 p.m. I'm so tired. Uh, dinner was really, really wonderful. Um, I only made it to page 250 of Mansfield Park so far. It's been very slow going and I really wish that I had more to say to you other than that nothing has happened. I mean, there have been some developments in the plot, but as is characteristic of Jane Austen's writing. It's very character development driven and usually the big plot twists or the drama doesn't happen until close to the very end. So 250 pages in, this has essentially been a diary of everyday life of the upper class. That being said, I did wake up at 5 a.m. this morning, so I'm so overdue for going to bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed finish Mansfield Park tomorrow. So, I'll see you guys then.
shocked. I am absolutely shocked by this novel. It is so difficult to know how to speak about a novel without giving any of the plot away. And so I'm going to try my best, but if you would like for Mansfield Park to be a complete and total surprise like it was for me, then go ahead and skip past this speaking part because I'm not sure that I can talk about what I think of the novel uh, without revealing a bit of what happened. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin, so let me start by saying good morning, friends. Um, welcome to a surprisingly cozy day. I'm wearing the most not obnoxious but a very very severe turtleneck if you will and the high today is 78 degrees i feel like i'm being a little bit ridiculous but compared to 115 to the 115 degrees that was monday 78 feels like winter and i'm loving it it's cloudy outside it's chilly in the house and i pulled down one of my favorite cozy turtlenecks um which was ideal for reading a jane austen novel so i woke up early in hopes of finishing mansfield park in the morning so that i could start editing this vlog and i sat down to start reading i was 250 pages in roundabout and then I did not stop until I finished the novel. So needless to say, things definitely picked up. I would say they started to pick up around page 300, but it wasn't until page 400 that things were really, really crazy. Um, yeah. I have many dog-eared pages with lots of underlined sentences and notes written within my book, but at about page 300, things seemed to finally come to a point and I found myself thinking like, how in the world are there nearly 200 pages left of this novel? What is going to happen? Fanny did complete her total transformation into a beautiful woman and her character remained strong and consistent throughout the novel, which I really love. In the second half of the book, there was a really surprising proposal which distressed Fanny quite a bit and um, I felt it going kind of the classic Jane Austen way in which a man proposes to our protagonist and she is totally off put by said man but eventually he wins her affections and this novel was definitely headed that direction and I must admit that I was really disappointed that that was the path it was going to take because of Fanny's character. This man who proposed just did not at all match what she believed to be most honorable and traits that she held most admirable by her judgment and upbringing. Fanny does not want to marry this man for very very good reasons, a myriad of good reasons. This particular person is a flirt and has made it his goal to break countless women's hearts. And Fanny has witnessed this repeatedly and feels that she is his next target. And it is her refusal to believe that this man is genuinely in love with her or attracted to her that attracts him even more to her. And so he becomes ever more persistent and her whole entire family and friends become involved and she's essentially advised by everyone dear to her to marry this man despite all the red flags, despite the many times he has proved himself to have a faulty character. I found this extremely frustrating, especially with the women in Fanny's inner circle. I actually, one page, there was a particular line that I really, really loved. Fanny is speaking with Edmund about the disapproval of her female friends and acquaintances of her decision to refuse this man. And um, she said, I should have thought, said Fanny, after a pause of recollection and exertion, that every woman must have felt the possibility of a man's not being approved, not being loved by someone of her sex, at least let him be ever so generally agreeable. Let him have all the perfections in the world. I think it ought not to be set down as certain that a man must be acceptable to every woman he may happen to like himself. <laughs> this is definitely a reoccurring theme in Jane Austen's novels, and it's that in her time, if a woman was proposed to, she was expected to always say yes, despite 
her own feelings, um, if the match made sense or could raise her life circumstances in measures of wealth and connection, she was supposed to say yes. And I also noted that during Jane Austen's time, or at least the time she writes about, I believe it's the same. In the early 1800s, courtship was so confusing. I always think that anytime I read a Jane Austen novel or anything written in the same period, you're not allowed to talk to anybody. Nobody was able to actually interact with and talk unreservedly with each other. And so you had to try and decipher if somebody liked you through looks and very, very polite, reserved interactions. And when Fanny is proposed to, she just cannot believe that this person actually has feelings for her despite his constant reassurances that he is indeed in love with her. And I thought that part of that was due to the fact that courtship during that time was so reserved. There was not a lot of room to show open affection for someone. And so I could see where it would be a surprise to find out that someone was in love with you back then. But that's something else. What I was saying is that so many of the women in Jane Austen novels are pressured into marriages that they don't necessarily want to be in and a lot of times they prefer genuine love over riches or wealth or raised circumstances and they're criticized for this or in the case of Emma and Jane Austen's Emma um, who spends a degree of her life single and proudly says that she does not feel inclined to marry, she's thought of as a little bit cold-hearted or foolish or perhaps too young to have actually experienced true love and therefore that's why she's so against marriage. I think that I've gone on a rant but something that I just love about Jane Austen's novels are her strong independent female protagonists and while I wouldn't necessarily categorize Fanny as strong and independent. She is at least steady in her mind and beliefs and unwavering in her character and how she interacts with others and her general disposition. But back to the story and the plot. As I mentioned so many times yesterday, nothing happened in the first 300 pages, but those 300 pages were spent really getting to know the characters and their various traits and as such, the ending of the novel was so shocking. It's actually something that I predicted from the beginning based on a declaration made by uh, Fanny's aunt, Mrs. Norris. The novel does end in a happy marriage, which Mrs. Norris, Fanny's aunt, at the beginning of the novel said could never possibly happen. And when I read that line, I knew it must happen. But through the journey of the novel, I, um, really began to feel like that wouldn't happen. I really don't like being vague, so I'm just gonna say it. So skip over this part, maybe um, until the very end if you don't want the story to be spoiled. But basically, Fanny is like a sister to her cousin Edmund. And throughout the novel, they have so much brotherly and sisterly affection for each other. And they're first cousins, so they're very much related. And then, at the end of the novel, they get married. <laughs> Which was shocking um, after spending so much time with them as brother and sister and first cousins. It was just really shocking. But I think that that kind of thing was a lot more normal during Jane Austen's time. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> I don't have any other word for it than shocking, but... Ultimately, the novel has a very happy, tied-up ending. There are just quite a few plot twists within the last 170 pages. And so, this was most certainly a grand finale to my endeavor to read Jane Austen's works. And um, I'm really glad that I ended with this one. If I were to rank my favorites, it's kind of difficult because, as I mentioned before, I read Pride and Prejudice I said five years ago, but it was actually six years ago, and Sense and Sensibility was five years ago. So those were so far, they seem, they feel like so far away. And I read Emma most recently last year, and I have very pleasant memories of reading Emma and watching the most recent movie adaptation. So currently, or presently, Emma is my all-time favorite. Uh, followed by Pride and Prejudice and then Sense and Sensibility. Then it would be Persuasion, followed by Mansfield Park and then Northanger Abbey. 
I also loved her novel On Love and um, enjoyed Sanditon and her short stories, but as far as the five most popular novels by her go, that's my current ranking, but it might change when I reread Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. We shall see. Thank you for following along with me on this journey. I believe that that is all that I have, and I should get to editing this vlog so that I can have it up and ready for you guys tomorrow. So friends, I hope that you have a really good weekend. Thank you so very much for being here, especially if you've watched this far along, and I will see you next week. Cheers!